Hey guys, this is Dow Phoenix, and I wanted to talk to you guys about Resident Evil 7 that just recently came out. I've had a chance to play it on the Xbox One. It's also available on the PlayStation 4 and PC. So let's get right into it. Everybody knows the song and dance with Resident Evil. I would imagine at least because it's been around for a long time. I mean, it's been over 20 years since we saw the first game. And it should be no surprise that obviously a lot of hype was behind this one, given that this is one of the main entries in the series, and it's the first one we've had in almost five years since Resident Evil 6. That said, there is a lot of controversy revolving around this game because of a radical shift in perspective. Now, this is not something that's unprecedented, of course. Back in 2005, Resident Evil 4 made the big change from fixed camera perspectives to a third person behind the shoulder view. And this one takes us right into first person, right in the eyes of the protagonist that we play as. His name is Ethan. So we don't know a lot about Ethan, but let's just say he's been married to a woman that has been missing for three years and he wants to find her. So he's going on the lookout after he gets a message, supposedly from her saying to come get her in Dolby, Louisiana. This is where the game starts, of course. Uh, right off the bat, you get the serious feels of classic Resident Evil as you approach an abandoned mansion area. And wow, this is a very decrepit looking mansion compared to the other ones in the series. And I've been talking like Resident Evil 5 having shanty towns in Africa standards. Uh, but wow. This mansion is just so creepy. It's so mesmerizing. Like it has a real lived in feel. And I really appreciate the design that they've had. Honestly, this is probably the best Resident Evil map design since the original game. And that's no small compliment because the original Resident Evil, one of the most memorable things about that game was the mansion, the actual place that you're in. Every spot was unforgettable. Every spot had a purpose to the design of the game, and Resident Evil 7 definitely delivers on such a promise. The mansion in Resident Evil 7 is in a bayou in Louisiana on the outskirts of a city, I guess. Like, it's in a very small town area. So obviously there's a lot of horror elements that present themselves when you put people in those particular scenarios. Because obviously there is a feeling of isolation since you're not near any kind of city body or you're not even near neighbors for that matter. So that's pretty serious. And then you have of course the fact of the matter that the nature of the outside of the building is just completely unruly. It has not been well maintained. It's uh, obviously been lost to nature over the years. And so you really get this sense of dread as soon as you enter the location. But at the same time, it's a wonderful feeling knowing that you're playing such a pure, isolated horror experience in this game. Let's talk about the perspective change of Resident Evil 7. Going into a first-person camera perspective is a huge change in the series. Now, it's not the first time we've encountered it. There have been games in the past, like Resident Evil Survivor, that have made such transitions. But those games had a completely different style of gameplay that's separate from what we have here. Uh, this game has a very slow-moving pace, similar to what we had in the classic fixed camera angle games. You don't run around jump kicking zombies or anything like that like you did at Resident Evil 6, you know. This is not that kind of game at all. And so if you like that really strong action focused basis of Resident Evil, this game might be hard to get into at first because um, the, at the very beginning, the little bit of action that you do have is uh, very demanding. It's not something that goes by quickly you know it's something that is very demanding of yourself as a player you have to play that scenario out in a smart and thought-provoking way and so you cannot play this game like you played resident evil 5 or 6 i'm sorry to say so if those are your kind of resident evil games you probably won't like the gameplay of this one now that being said if you really 
truly stick around to it, this game will strongly deliver. The demo, of course, told us to think that, oh, this is like Outlast, where we're going to be hiding and doing all this creepy stuff, you know, trying to sneak around. And there is a little bit of element of that, but not exactly. No, this is fully a Resident Evil game outside of some minor little things like that because you do actually fight enemies and you also can of course opt to run away to conserve your ammo because you actually do have limited ammo. Gone are the days of Resident Evil 4 through 6 where you get ammo drops by killing enemies. That does not happen in this game at all. Any ammunition and supplies that you find you have to take advantage of and you have to use them to their fullest potential. You can't be going around machine gunning walls because you're going to die pretty quickly if that's how you play the game. With that being said, despite the perspective change, this game plays more like the classic games than anything from Resident Evil 4 on have. It definitely has that strong isolated feel, the slow movement, the thought provoking puzzles and everything like that. I mean, when I'm talking about thought-provoking puzzles, holy shit, dude, there are some really memorable puzzles in this game. Puzzles that harken back all the way to the police station in Resident Evil 2. I mean, it really took a lot to get through some of these puzzles. And uh, one of them had a particularly interesting and horrifying surprise at the end of it. And I really enjoyed it. You know, I think that's what really resonated with me with Resident Evil 7 and what I think also resonates with all great Resident Evil games is that they have these strong memorable moments these moments that pretty much can drive you to replay the game because this game honestly does not have a lot of replay value you do have a couple of different endings that you can take advantage of you do have some different difficulty settings that the hardest one, of course, will rearrange some items, change some enemies up, and things like that. But for the most part, it's going to be pretty much the same experience. Uh, what really makes the game replayable is the memorable locations, the memorable events that happen in this game. This is not like Resident Evil 5 where you're going through shantytown after shantytown that look all pretty much the same shooting all the same kinds of enemies and then of course you do change locations but once you get there those locations all look the same this game is not like that at all it is very strongly focused in its location design there's only a few locations all together in this game but they're all meticulously designed they all have a lived in alive feeling to them and that's something that is missing from most of the modern resident evil games even Resident Evil 4 kind of failed in some aspects with that, as much as I really enjoyed that game. Like I said, this goes all the way back to the original Resident Evil level design. Holy moly, it is fantastic, people. I am not kidding. Now, the graphics, they're pretty good. I played on the Xbox One version. It is the weakest link of the versions that are on there, but it still looked pretty good. Um, there were several moments of striking photorealism in the graphics and then there were some things of course that really stood out there were a few moments of low resolution textures and things like that that really stood out versus the otherwise really good graphics of the game the lighting is fantastic of course you know there's not any kind of weird issues with that you know the shadows aren't the best on the xbox but they're still pretty good you know they definitely have a lot of cool shadow effects and it just has a striking appearance. It really has a strong standing appearance. And then, of course, you think about the sounds. Now, admittedly, some of the sounds that they throw in there are meant to just get cheap jump scares. Like, they'll have sometimes, like, pipes just randomly following you, though there's not any actual pipes that fell. There are moments like that, but it really lends to the tension of this game. The sound design is excellent outside of those forced in sound cues that they have i really appreciated the sound design otherwise and i highly recommend giving it a good listen with your headphones or in a surround system you're gonna enjoy the hell out of it unless you get too scared of course then maybe don't do that but if you want to dive in you really can get into the nitty-gritty of this 
Now, of course, with the change in the gameplay and things like that, as well as the demo not having any weapons or combat of any sort, people were worried, oh, this is not like Resident Evil, this is like Outlast or maybe Alien Isolation, where you do get some weapons, but they don't really do anything good. Like, maybe deter the enemy a little bit. And that is the case with a couple of enemies, which I don't want to spoil, but you actually get real weapons, just like you got from Resident Evil, and they have very meaningful and impactful damage that you can do to these enemies. You definitely can deter threats very effectively in this game. The accuracy is not the best, admittedly. You know, you can definitely get some more accurate shooting from a well-known first-person shooter like Battlefield or Call of Duty, but that's not this kind of game. You know, this game is definitely a lot slower paced, a lot more thought-provoking, but at the same time, you really need to react quickly. Uh, one thing that was really interesting with the gameplay I noticed is that you now have a defend mechanic, uh, which will help you deter some or even all damage in some cases. Like if it's a really minor hit, you can deter all damage completely. Or if there is any damage, it's not really very noticeable. You no longer have like the little heartbeat sensor thing that just shows your health. Unless you go into your inventory, then you'll have it like on a wristwatch on your character. But otherwise, you can detect your damage by the blood spatter that goes around the screen. The more blood spatter, the closer you are to death. And I think that's a really cool effect to give the player an immediate way to see how much health they have without having it have a heads up display that overcomplicates the experience. Now, there are some complaints I've heard about that I definitely want to echo a little bit with this particular game. I noticed some people mentioned, for example, the lack of enemy types, which I guess is a valid complaint because there's really not that many types of enemies. But it wasn't so much about the types of enemies as much as the actual encounters that I really enjoyed because the enemies themselves weren't really that crazy. I mean, although the boss fights are fantastic. I mean, these are some of the best boss fights we've had in Resident Evil history. I'm telling you people. Amazing stuff. But some of the basic enemies, they're not that special. You know, they're pretty standard stuff that you seen similar as stuff in other horror games but it's more about the way they design these enemy encounters you know in the particular spaces that they put them in it's very well placed and it really adds to the overall terrifying feeling of playing this game so i really applaud the design that they had with that that being said it would be nice to have more enemy variety because every other mainstream Resident Evil game has had pretty good varieties of enemies and this one definitely is lacking in comparison. But hopefully with DLC and whatnot they will address that issue. So let's hope to see some good stuff, which we will have some free DLC in the spring. That's going to be really interesting to see. And so my final thoughts on Resident Evil 7. Definitely play it people, definitely play it any chance you can get. If you're still skeptical after what I'm showing and what I have discussed, rent it. It's in red boxes. Or rent it from your local video store if you have one that still exists. Or whatever, Gamefly it, you know. Just check it out, people. It really is an enjoyable horror experience. This is the next echelon of Resident Evil games. This is going to be the one that's going to define future games to come until... A major shift happens again. Who knows? Resident Evil 10 probably, because it seems like Capcom has a pattern of one establishing the core gameplay, four establishing a new type of gameplay, and then seven, of course, kind of adding elements of the old, but also having an entirely new take on things. And so I can imagine we're going to see that kind of progression because it seems like it isn't just me that's really enjoying this game. A lot of people are enjoying this game. And I really do not understand the people that are complaining about it. Because it seems like those people are not actually playing the game. They really don't have any idea what they're talking about. Judging it just based on a demo or based on some video clips or stuff like that. You know, because this is a game that you just need to try for yourself before you can judge it. 
So let me know what you guys think. Uh, I'm not a big fan of giving a number score, but if I had to give it a number, it would be a 9 out of 10. Resident Evil is definitely one to pick up, people. Uh, at least if you're into horror games. Heck, even if you're not into horror games, but you have some curious thoughts about it, check it out. But till then, down Phoenix, out.